Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Uh, now, uh, take these handcuffs, Mr. Steed. Uh, they're supposed to be escape-proof. Sent over here for testing, like the rest of this stuff. Care to try them on? Well, I... Uh, uh, now, <laughs> what's your problem? Apart from getting out of the handcuffs... <laughs> it's about the old hill monastery. Oh, a delightful place. I spent a whole month there whilst vetting it. Ideal for our purposes. No one could escape from there. Rostov and Lubin managed it. What? A getaway? A gotaway. That's why I'm here. It's impossible. It's escape proof. Escape proof? Like these handcuffs? John Steed looked keenly at Professor Dodge as he slipped out of the handcuffs and threw them on the desk. Oh, this is dreadful. My reputation is at stake. I shall inspect the whole of Old Hill Monastery from top to bottom, right now. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. So many women say, once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Because there's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water OMO. It solves Mrs. Sutherland's washing problems for her. Very dirty oil or grease moth. Yes. If you use cold water OMO, there's no trouble at all. It comes out very, very easily indeed. There's no washing problem too difficult for cold water OMO. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Day in, night out, when only a woman, perfectly good, sweetly perfumed. Now you can choose from Benolia's five new classic fragrances. Episode four of this story, in which John Seed and Emma Peel make some headway, but still can't explain how two top enemy agents made a getaway. Two of John Seed's best friends, both top British Secret Service agents, had been killed. They had met their deaths shortly after the escape of two foreign spies from the prison known as Old Hill Monastery. The escapes had been planned at different times, but were both carried out in a most mysterious manner. The prisoners, pursued and hemmed in by guards, had simply disappeared. Steed had consulted Professor Dodge, who had designed the monastery's security system, and sent Mrs. Peel to the ministry to check up on the personal habits of the three spies, Rostov and Lubin, who had made the escape, and Esdorf, the remaining and most dangerous agent, who swore he would also escape, and once free, would kill John Steed. Mrs. Peel asked for files on the three enemy agents. Um, here you are, Mrs. Peel. The files on Rostov, Lubin, and Erzdorf. Well, thank you, Mr. Peters. Now, uh, will you excuse me? It's feeding time. Lunch already? Early, isn't it? I believe in feeding at short intervals. Uh, every 25 minutes. Pardon? Uh, delicious little ant eggs. Ant eggs? Oh, I often throw in a beetle or two. For hors d'oeuvres, so to speak. Oh, it's not for me, silly. It's for them. Peters, with a nonchalant wave of the hand, indicated a glass tank. Uh, look at them, the little dears. Here, come and have some ant eggs. And Mrs. Peel stared, somewhat mystified, at the glass tank. It seemed to contain only rocks and plants. Shouldn't they have some water in there? Uh, they hardly ever drink. I meant to swim in. Uh, lizards hardly swim. Uh, Mrs. Peel, they, they bask. Uh, that's the word, bask. Oh, I see. Well, I don't see. I don't see any of them. Oh, they're somewhere. They will hide away, but they are in there somewhere. Are you sure? Oh, well, of course I'm sure. Uh, that is, uh, of course. Um, Pops in. Alfred. Sydney. Uh, show yourselves, you naughty creatures. <laughs> Popsy, uh, come and have an antique. Mrs. Peel turned away with an amused smile and picked up the files. She opened them, selected several papers and photographs, Clipped to one of the photographs was a piece of paper. What's this, Mr. Peters? Alfred! Alfred, where are you? What's that? 
Oh, you may well ask. Peters looked at the piece of paper which had written upon it CX VIII VI XXV. I am asking. Roman numerals. Well, yes, that had occurred to me. But why with the files? Uh, we found a copy of that number in the sole of each man's shoe. Rostov, Lubin, and Esdorf all carried this number? Yes. It's obviously a code, but we've never been able to break it. Julius Caesar's birthday. What? Uh, are you sure? A joke, Mr. Peters. Oh, a joke. A joke. May I keep this for a while? Certainly. And if you decipher it, you will let us know, won't you? Oh, I shall, I shall. Never fear. Bye, Mr. Peters. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Bill. Now, now, where are you, my little pet? Alfred, Bobsey. <laughs> Back in Steed's apartment, Mrs. Peel spent some time on the files and then turned her attention to the Roman numerals. She picked up one of Steed's books, Advanced Code Breaking. Couldn't even understand the first sentence and threw the book down. On the table were the personal possessions taken from Lubin's cell after he'd escaped. The copy of Bryant's Natural History magazine had an issue number printed under the title. It read, Number of issue, CXV, III... V-I. The coded number is C-X-V-I-I-I, V-I-X-X-V. All that's lacking between the issue number of this magazine found in Lubin's cell and the code number they all carried is X-X-V. X-X-V is 25. Page 25. Oh, page 25 is missing. Torn out. It didn't take Mrs. Peel long to find out the telephone number of Bryant's Natural History magazine. She got through at once and demanded to speak to the editor. Bryant's Natural History magazine, Cedric Bryant speaking. Uh, Mrs. Emma Peel speaking from MI5. Important. We want to get hold of a back copy of your magazine. Uh, which issue do you want? Well, I'm not attempting the translation. If you C-X-V-I-I-I-V-I. The special reptile issue. Oh, yes. Well, there's no problem there. I'm at 12. We have several copies left. I'm sure I can find you one. Just hold on a moment. You know, my desk, I think I have... Oh. 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 Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown, have you... Mrs. Peel heard the click of the receiver being replaced at the other end. She slammed down the receiver into its cradle and ran out of Steed's apartment, heading for her car. In the cell inhabited by Rostov before his escape, Professor Dodge was testing the walls, each stone in turn. Professor? Oh, oh. oh Steed, I do wish you wouldn't do that. You startled me. I'm sorry. How are you getting on? I've uh, covered the east wing and Lubin cell with a fine... A fine hammer, solid, granite, two feet thick. It'd take a lifetime to chisel through. No chance of a secret panel or trap door? No, 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 quite out of the question. I, I went over the place with a microscope. How anyone could escape from here bewilders me. I, given time, I pride myself that there isn't a lock I couldn't pick or a safe I couldn't crack. Yes. Steed strolled over to Rostov's table. A few things were still lying on it. Steve picked up Bryant's Natural History magazine and thumbed through it. What's this? Page missing. Page 25. Mrs. Peel had found the offices of Bryant's Natural History magazine and was mounting the stairs, while inside the office, Lubin was making sure of a few things. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this should stop any further investigation. <laughs> Nothing important is left. All the papers burned in the metal waste paper basket. Lubin <laughs> stopped as Mrs. Peel's footsteps came along the corridor. She tried the door. It was locked. Lubin faded back into the shadows. Mrs. Peel had never let a locked door stop her in her life. <laughs> Lubin, in the shadows, pulled up the hood of his duffel coat and remained in hiding. Mrs. Peel, smelling the burning papers, advanced cautiously to the waste paper basket. It was then that she saw Cedric Bryant's body lying by the desk. She moved over, knelt beside him, and turned him over. 
Let's see. Dead, all right. What's this? Beneath the dead man was a copy of a magazine. The special reptile issue. She picked it up, but a voice behind her said, I'll take uh, that. Certainly. <laughs> Mrs. Peel chopped the gun from Lubin's fist. He threw her across the room. <laughs> Mrs. Peel fell heavily. Lubin plunged forward. Mrs. Peel scrambled to her knees and sidestepped. Lubin, unable to stop, tore forward and crashed through the plate glass. Window. <laughs> Mrs. Peel hurried to the window and looked down. There was no one there. A few minutes later, she noticed a small van drive away. The van carried a name, Magnus Importing Co. Otherwise, the street was deserted and the pavement empty. <laughs> The Natural History Magazine. Special reptile, I assume. It came from Rostov's cell. Oh, don't tell me, Steed. I know. Page 25 is missing. Uh, well, how do you know? That? It's really very simple. In Steed's apartment, Mrs. Peel paused from sipping a cup of tea and traced the Roman numeral code number on top of the magazine, pointing out matching figures with a delicately polished fingernail. <sighs> Mrs. Peel, do you realize that this stumped our greatest cipher expert? Oh, it's just one of those lucky breaks. Happens. They'll probably give you a medal. They might even make you a dame. Hmm. Wouldn't it sound rather vulgar? Dame Mrs. Emma Peel? Oh, Mrs. Peel, nothing you wear, not even a name, could be vulgar. So you went to Brian's place and found him dead? And Lubin went straight through the window and disappeared. With the last remaining complete copy of the magazine? Oh, no. Lubin went, but the magazine remained. Here, turn to page 25. Ah, here we are. Lizards and their habits. I've read it. It's, um... Rather intimate. Oh, disgusting habits, and they? Awful. And terribly crafty. They hide from their enemies by merging with the background. And lizards. How do lizards fit in with all this? Where's the link between lizards and... Lizards. Lizards. Wait a minute. Where's that empty vodka bottle that came from Lubin's cell? Ah. Here we are. Just look at that label. Lizard, lizard vodka. vodka. Full strength. <laughs> Take the protection of famous shield deodorant. Squeeze it inside a sensational soap, and you've got... The soap deodorant. Here's a deodorant you simply wash on. Shield soap deodorant. A soap that cleans all over with a rich, luxurious lather. A soap that protects all over with a certainty of shield. Complete protection can't start till you're clean all over. That's why Shield have invented the soap deodorant. New Shield soap deodorant. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. So many housewives, like Mrs. Adenall, say... I wash every single thing in cold water anode. Anything that's washable come out. Spotlessly clean. Yes, OMO cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers, Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel, is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.